All right. Thank you again, uh, David, for having me. And I heard a bit of uh, the option professor before we got started. He's always got a lot of great material, like drinking from a fire hose after listening to Jim. So we've been on some other events before. It's always very enjoyable and insightful. But what we're going to do is we're going to spend a brief uh, time here together, kind of a sneak peek preview, bit of a tongue twister there. We're going to look at how we trade professional option strategies, and we do this with automation. We have pre-built option spreads. We have an algor algorithm that we developed uh, years ago after trading millions and millions of contracts. And we're gonna just briefly touch on that. But again, this is really just more of a preview. And so all this can be automated with your risk and your profit directives. We have a special indicator that'll do that for us. And we're looking at strategies for any market conditions, whether you're looking to hedge an overall portfolio, or perhaps you want to speculate and just be more directional, uh, bullish or bearish. Either way, that makes no difference. Options, of course, can be very flexible. And we have these unique one-touch trade alerts where these are integrated with your account. So these are really, really something our clients absolutely love. And we'll just kind of briefly show you a bit about that. So first of all, remember we are speculating and with speculation always comes risk. So whenever you try to make money and profit, there's always a risk. So keep in mind, it's important to look at this risk disclosure. I'll leave it here for just a brief moment and uh, give you a chance to look at that. The one thing to be really aware of is that all funds used with trading should be risk capital and that past performance is no guarantee of future results. And a little bit about who we are. We are AltaVest and since 1997 we've been a brokerage firm and we're in the futures and options space having traded tens of millions of contracts over the years. So I've been doing this for what is that 26 years now? Is that is my math correct? It seems to be uh, adding up, well, it's, well, 27, right? 2023. 20, so I guess my math wasn't correct. And a little bit about myself. I'm Eric Gebhardt. I've been doing this 32 years now. In 1991, I started in the business, had my Series 3 license, and I have a BS in business administration from the University of Southern California. So I was in the uh, securities industry before uh, jumping into futures and options and I was a broker at a couple large brokerage firms uh, before starting and co-founding AltaVest in 1997. All right, and with that said, I'm going, going to stop the video at the moment just because the introduction is out of the way. It gives you more room on your screen, I believe. So here's what we don't do. We don't try to day trade individual stocks or the chop in the markets and all that noise. It's not what we do. So that's not what we're going to be talking about. So, and why, why is this? Why don't we day trade? Well, a lot of studies say that it's very, very difficult to do, perhaps a less than 1% success rate, depending on who you are and your situation. And this was interesting article here in Bloomberg. Uh, last year, they talked about the day trader army that went broke. So all the day trading hysteria and the hype that emerged from the pandemic and the lockdown and the meme stock era, whatever money was made, uh, it was just as quickly lost. So we're not interested in get rich quick schemes or anything like that at all. Now, take a look at these three barriers. We kind of identified these and let me know how you relate to these. And I'll keep an eye here on the uh, chat, but I'd be curious to know which ones you find are the the biggest hurdles, so to speak, uh, for trading. So number one, noise. Basically, there's just too much information. Again, that drinking from a fire hose analogy might even apply uh, in this way, in this case, because you've got, uh, you know, talking heads and, and media and the pundits and analysts and strategists and, you know, everybody's got an opinion, the bulls, bears, and of course, uh, Everyone in the industry has a various uh, an opinion as well. But of course, keep in mind, everyone has a different incentive to make comments and claims about whether or not a stock is going to go up or down. Typically, they have a position <laughs> in that stock if they're pushing it or talking favorably. But anyway, but looking at uh, price predictions, for example, we talk about noise. 
I thought this was kind of, it made me laugh and maybe it will make you chuckle. But here from a year ago, here are the 2022 S&P 500 forecasts from all the major uh, financial firms. So you can see anywhere from 5330 down to 4400. Now, how on earth is that helpful? If you think that's helpful, let me know. But I don't know why that even matters. Why did it, why do they even bother? It's just ridiculous just throwing out numbers and putting a price target on it. I mean, the range is so wide, it's just absurd. And this one here, basically Bitcoin is either going to 250,000 or a quarter million dollars per Bitcoin or it's going to 5,000 next year. Um, again, you know, just absolutely worthless. Just turn off the financial news channels, if you, if you ask me, no help at all. And this one here in particular, always, you know, I don't wanna pick on Jim Cramer, but I guess I am. Here he says that Elizabeth Holmes is the next Steve Jobs. Of course, she's in prison now. And then he says, Sam Bankman Freed is the next JP Morgan and he may end up in prison. So, you know, again, um, let's not rely on and lean on any of these people and their opinions. It's really just narrative and storytelling, and that's not what we're interested in doing. So no fairy tales with what we do. How about the second barrier is essentially time. Do you have time in the, in the day to screen watch and to essentially babysit your trades? And do you really want to, be uh, tied down to your screens all day. So here's a comment here. I pulled off a chat room or something. I don't know where it was, I forget. Uh, but this person here says, on a day-to-day -day basis, I'd say the market consumes 10 to 12 hours of my day. So I guess uh, maybe some people can pull that off, but a lot of us have other things we'd rather do with friends, family, and so on and so forth. And that's just a lot to ask of anyone. And how about the third barrier, emotions. How do you control your emotions? Well, I think you need professional coaching and the tools. And that's what we're gonna talk about here uh, in full next week. And we talk about coaching, almost like a caddy. Reminds me of having a caddy by your side as a professional uh, coach when you're actually you know, on the field, so to speak, and out on the uh, reading the greens and so forth. So that's part of what we do. And we'll talk about that again in more depth, but you wanna get, get off this roller coaster in this cycle of market emotions. And how, one way you can help, we can help you do that and is just be aware that algorithms have no emotion and no bias and they're dominating the landscape. So 90% of US equity trading volume is now algo trading or high frequency trading or machine driven, you, you name it. Anything you wanna name it uh, in terms of uh, uh, AI and all that, that's what they're talking about. And that's an estimate from JP Morgan. So this is your competition. It's really not people like us behind their screens, clicking their mouse. It's really more so the machines. Kind of reminds me of that Terminator movie, Rise of the, wasn't it called Rise of the Machines or anyway. Uh, okay, so how do we navigate in this landscape and how do we use the options and what are these professional option strategies that the um, I guess you could say the insiders are using well I can tell you what they're not doing professional strategies are not simply just buying options that's uh, I read a statistic and essentially out of all the Robin Hood traders hardly almost all of them just buy options you know, so that's really, um, I hate to say it, but that's dumb money. So if you're only buying stock options, for example, time is always working against you or theta in options parlance. And this is a link um, if you want to go look at this particular interview, or it's not really an interview, but it's just a uh, an overview on options trading. I thought there were some good pieces. And here's this woman here. She says, the appeal for a lot of retail investors to buy options is that they're much cheaper, but your potential for profit is actually not that high. And she's absolutely correct. So where do you wanna be? How do you want to, uh, which side of the trade do you wanna be on, so to speak, when you're doing options? Well, you wanna trade spreads and that means you're selling options and that's what professionals do. They incorporate selling options and uh, premium collection. And that reminds me of how insurance companies might trade options. 
they're getting paid those premiums to assume risk. So the people uh, are paying them the premium and they're collecting the premium. They're selling and managing time and they always insure themselves by hedging and they're consistent and they're patient and they have a process. That's a key word. I should probably um, bold that there. And then probability is the other key word. So they look at long-term probabilities and simply math that favors them. So you have these professional multi-leg option strategies and they use these, the professional traders, options traders are collecting premium on a net basis. So what we're gonna do is we'll take a deep dive uh, in next week's presentation and introduce you to our proprietary options spread trading technology. And here's just a little example. We'll look at some of these proprietary strategies that have wide margin of error and we'll take a deeper dive, but I just want to give you a quick glimpse. This would be the upper boundary of the trade. This would be the lower boundary of the trade. And in this case, if the market bounces around in this really wide range, uh, then that trade should work out well. And we'll also talk about the advantages of doing this with futures options. If you've not done futures options, it doesn't matter. An option works the same, no matter if it's for real estate or stocks or ETFs or futures. So remember, we're collecting option premium and we're gonna show you these unique strategies, these proprietary strategies actually, and they can be non-directional, bullish and bearish as well. And I think it's important to point out the non-directional approach. Uh, oftentimes people always think they have to pick a direction, but here's the question. I believe that's Jackie Chan. He's looking very perplexed there, but how do you, how do you even create these spreads? So how would you know which markets to buy and sell, which strategies to apply uh, at what price in terms of your entry? And then how do you manage the risk and the profits? So those are all very good questions. So again, the answer we'll show you in our software solution with these pre-built option spreads. We have a proprietary uh, algorithm that will create these spreads for us and just offer them to you every day on a, on a menu. And these are all these professional style strategies. Uh, a lot of these premium collection strategies we talked about, bull bear, non-directional or flat market conditions, and then automation. And that's really key is you might have all the best intentions, but if you can't really manage your risk and profit, then it doesn't really matter how you, uh, how much time and effort you put into getting into the trade. And we can even make it easier than the software because what we do is we have a trade alert functionality that pushes out the trade directly to your smart device. And all you have to do is touch your screen. So it, it really is incredible uh, technology. You just touch your screen and that will then accept the trade and then we'll execute that trade. And then from there, of course, you can uh, have, have the software automatically track it for you and monitor it for you. It scans it and it decides when to get uh, out of the trade for a profit uh, or a loss. So you either touch uh, accept or you touch reject and that's all you have to do. So, and we just, thought we'd jump into this just for a brief moment here about why it's important to have strategies that aren't always long only. And I think I saw the tail end of uh, Jim's uh, piece there about a lot of these uh, valuations, mean reverting and so forth with the stock market in general. And you don't, you don't want to just always be long and, and just hope the best for the best, because sometimes it, it can take years, if not decades for markets to get back to where they were. But you know, right now we're signaling recession in the near term, according to the leading economic indicator index from the conference board. And that's one that uh, really is very, very, very reliable. Sort of, um, I know we looked at, uh, Jim looked at the Buffett indicator as well, but look at this, the US LEI fell sharply again in December. It's continuing to signal recession for the US economy. And this is actually from, a quote from the director, senior director of economics at the conference board. So this is their actual index. So he, you know, he's just kind of telling you like it is. He says the LEI is showing no signs at all of recovering. So this is where we are on that index right now. And this is an overlay of the history of the index and the gray areas here are recessions. So you can see this index plunges and then what happens with that red area? You get a recession. You know, the index starts plunging and you're in recession. Index plunges. You had that, you know, obviously the recession there during the pandemic. And again, we're dropping again 
and we have another recession signal. So keep in mind, folks, we're probably not anywhere close to being out of the woods. And again, the Fed is, you know, and I heard option professor as well mention this, uh, don't expect them to all of a sudden pivot and go dovish. Uh, Powell does not want to be uh, Burns, the uh, Federal Reserve chairman who made the mistake in the 70s of essentially um, lowering rates too quickly. And then inflation came back even worse uh, by the late 70s and into early 80s. So they don't want to make that mistake again. And look what's happening. Credit card loan debt is record highs. Savings are at record lows here near historical bottoms. So we like the idea, and you should probably definitely, not probably, but you should definitely consider having alternatives uh, in your portfolio. And you know, you you want something that's flexible, and these option strategies can certainly uh, provide that flexibility. We mentioned how it can take years and years, if not decades, for markets to to turn around. I mean, here you have the 2000 crash and you didn't get back to where you were uh, for many years later. Same thing after 2008. So it can take a long, long time. There are periods in the past where the Dow took uh, uh, 20 years to get back to where you would have started. And here's Stanley Druckenmiller. If you're not familiar with him, I'll show you a little bit about him. But he says there's a high probability the stock market will be flat for an entire decade. and why should we listen to him? Well, this is why, because he's actually done it. <laughs> he um, is more than just a, well, he's not a talking head or a pundit. He's actually a money manager with a stellar, stellar track record and career. So you'd be wise to listen to his warnings. He, on Wall Street here, he says that he delivered, says here he delivered an annual average return of 30% from 1986 to 2010. And that's managing, I think he had, I'm not even sure, I think it was something 20 to 30 billion, maybe even more at some point. But what they don't mention is he had almost no drawdowns on any given year, meaning I think his biggest loss on any given year might've been just a few percent. So that's incredible, incredible performance. So let's pay attention to the guys and gals who've actually done things. So we think it makes a lot of sense to have something like this. Your portfolio should look something like this, perhaps. Uh, I can't really speak to how you allocate with uh, stocks and bonds and all, but we like the idea of having some of your assets allocated into the alternative space, such as what we do with these option strategies. So they do not rely on markets always going up. So that's really the key there. So I'll invite you to a full presentation. We'll do a real deep dive into our strategies, our software. We'll run through trade simulations. We'll run through the trade alerts and all that functionality. We'll show you all the different trades and the menu of trades that you can select from, how you can automate your uh, risk and reward. So we'll show you all of that, these professional option strategies for all market conditions. So that's next Wednesday, that's February 1st, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so feel free to take a screenshot of what you see here. And that, I believe, is the last slide. So I'll leave that there. And let's see if there's any other thoughts or comments or questions. Probably not. But uh, that's OK. Let's see here. Someone mentioned something about, yes, the exit point. That is absolutely the most difficult thing, if not whether, well, let's put it this way, whether you're getting out of a trade for a win or a loss, uh, it's the exit of the trade that makes all the difference in the world. So that's what we can help you with. And we can automate that so that you're always out of these trades before they expire. We don't hold on to these things and we're not hoping. That's not a strategy. So we can automate that for you. And we use technology to our advantage. Absolutely. Yeah, the talking clowns. That's right. A lot of talking clowns uh, on TV, internet, cable, social media, you name it so much noise and smoke and mirrors to filter through. So this is what really helps you just avoid all that and just cuts to the, the numbers. That's all we're looking at is the math. All right, um, I see the link in there. So yeah, feel free to jump on that link right there and get yourself registered for the main presentation next week. And we'll have a bunch of time to dig into that.
and have a Q&A and so on and so forth. But so that is all I have for the sneak peek and the preview. And you're welcome to uh, join us. And we look forward to seeing you there next week.